Hello, and thank you for taking the time to view this video. I'm Clinton Albert, an attorney with Colorado Legal Services. In this segment, I'll be reviewing information and laws regarding security deposits. Please keep in mind that the following does not constitute legal advice and is for informational purposes only. In Colorado, a security deposit is defined as any advance or deposit of money, regardless of its denomination, the primary function of which is to secure the performance of a rental agreement for residential premises or any part of. Prior to moving into a new residence, most leases require a security deposit be paid by the tenant. The best practice for tenants is to obtain a receipt for the security deposit and keep that receipt in a secure place. It would be best to keep that with your lease itself. Now keep in mind that the security deposit is not the landlord's property. It is money that's being held just to make sure that the tenant follows through with the obligations as set forth in the lease. For landlords, the best practice with security deposits is to keep that deposit in a separate account so there is no premature withdrawal. Now, typically, after a tenancy has ended and the tenant has moved out of the residence, that's when security deposit disputes will arise. By law, landlords have 30 days after a tenancy has ended to return the tenant security deposit. Now, that can be either by lease termination or by surrender and acceptance of the premises by the landlords. The landlord has to return the full security deposit within that 30-day period or a written statement explaining the exact reasons the full amount is not being returned along with any remaining amount. That 30-day period can be extended up to 60 days if it is written into the lease. And there's the statute for that authority. Now, landlords cannot keep a tenant's security deposit for no reason. Tenants must provide a forwarding address to the landlord. And the withholding must be for a reason recognized by the law. Now, a landlord can withhold for security deposit for damage beyond normal wear and tear. And normal wear and tear is defined as that deterioration which occurs based upon the use for which the rental unit is intended without negligence, carelessness, accident, or abuse of the premises or equipment or chattels by the tenant or member of his household or their invitees or guests. Meaning that if a tenant's guest puts a hole in the wall, the tenant's going to be responsible for that hole. Other reasons that a landlord can keep a security deposit include the non-payment of rent, the abandonment of the premises by the tenant, the non-payment of utilities, and or for repair work or cleaning work that was contracted for by the tenant. Landlords are only required to send the security deposit and or the letter to tenants who have provided a forwarding address. A landlord has no obligation to find a tenant who has not left a forwarding address. As a tenant, if you want to dispute your landlord's withholding of your security deposit, you must first give your landlord a written notice. This notice is a seven-day notice of your intention to start legal proceedings and to recover your security deposit. Make sure you keep a copy of this letter for your own records. If you are disputing certain reasons for the withholding, it would be the best practice to include those specific reasons why you are disputing that particular withholding from your security deposits. Providing photographs to support this dispute would be a good practice or any other documentation to support your dispute. If the landlord returns your full security deposit to the tenant within seven days, then the tenant will not have any grounds to contest the withholding because there will be no withholding. If the tenant does not receive a response to the letter, a return of the full deposit, or is not satisfied with the response or return of a partial deposit after sending the notice to the landlord, the tenant can file a case in court. A tenant can seek treble damages, which is three times the amount, for a wrongfully withheld security deposit if the case is filed within one year of the wrongful withholding of the security deposit. In court, it's the landlord who has to prove that the withholding of the security deposit was not wrongful by what's called a preponderance of evidence. Now, it's my opinion that the best practices when moving out of a residence for both the landlord and the tenant is to conduct a walkthrough with both parties to inspect for any damage. I think this step should be taken at both the beginning and the end of the tenancy. Use photographs to document the residence. Take advantage of checklists and conduct a walkthrough if you are able to. This extra effort may avoid or resolve disputes that come up after a tenancy has ended. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this informational segment regarding security deposits.